Policies and Services meeting, uh, com subcommittee of the uh, Policing Review Commission. Uh, 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 I'm calling it to order and um, uh, this, uh, uh, this meeting is, be is a Zoom meeting, it's being recorded. And uh, uh, let's take a roll call and uh, let's get started that way. Noah, would you, would you take the roll? Yeah, Nick. Here. David. Here. Cynthia. Here. Namdi. Here. And Elizabeth is not yet here. Okay, thank you. And oh, I apologize. I um, I didn't do any minutes today because I took a little bit of President's Day off. So <laughs> I hope that's okay. And uh, I will get them to you next time. <laughs> Sounds good. No, no, we totally understand. <laughs> totally understand. Thank you. Um, so, um, so what I, what I want to do is, um, what I was going to suggest is we, we move, I don't know if we're permitted to change the order of the agenda, but I was, okay. I was going to su suggest that we maybe, um, allow for public comment if anybody from the public joins us, uh, in, uh, in a few minutes mm -hmm. and, uh, that I just, move things around. What, what do other people, are other people okay with that or any, any thoughts about that? It's okay with me, but we do have one person now. Yes, right. Um, we do, and, and there was another person who started to get on and I don't see them on. Right. Um, I w and what are you proposing, Nick? Because isn't general comments first? It, Public it, comments? It is. I'm proposing we change the order of the agenda. That's all. From what to what? I'm sorry. Uh, that we moved the public comment uh, uh, back by about 15 minutes in case anybody else gets on. That's what I was suggesting. Mm -hmm. But that's actually not fair to people who are on right now. So uh, yeah, yeah that, that's a good point. So yeah. let's just move ahead with it. Um, uh, so um, I, I am... Uh, we are um, opening up the, the beginning of this meeting and perhaps our future meetings with, fifth, with up to 15 minutes of public comment. Um, uh, each person can have three minutes uh, to say whatever they would like and give us whatever feedback you would like. And uh, 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 commissioners will not be responding um, uh, to specific comments. I wanna just say one more thing. Uh, it, it, as a general uh, statement that I probably would like to say at any public comment is that I ask that people be very conscious of the uh, uh, potential for a lot of emotion in, this, in the topics that we talk about and that people work on being very respectful, as respectful as possible of each other's points of view. Um, uh, man, many of us uh, hold um, uh, lots of strong feelings about our ideas. So uh, I'm opening it up to see if anybody wants to say anything um, or to see if the one person who is on wants to say anything. And otherwise, uh, we'll take it from there. Okie doke. Um, I want to ask, uh, well, I'm assuming that since that's the order of the agenda, that anybody who wanted to contribute in public comment uh, would know that it's the beginning at the beginning of the meeting, and that's their opportunity. And, uh, uh, and uh, thank you, Yaping, for um, just letting us know that you're joining us and that you don't don't need to say anything tonight. Um, if I read that correctly, let me just see. Okay, thanks. Um, all right, well then let's let's uh, let's move on with our agenda. Um, the first thing on the agenda is to catch up with what. Namdi, what you were saying about what you wanted to bring up about Smith College 
and the relationship with, uh, with our police department. And uh, um, I'd like to turn it over to you to share your thoughts about that. Are you frozen, Namdi? Kind of, kind of looks that way. The, the, the background, the background may be freezing you. It is a pretty background, but it, I think it requires more, more effort. San Francisco, no? Yeah. <laughs> this is this is a very awkward Zoom moment. Uh, Namdi looks like he's just about to say something. <laughs> let's let's give it a minute. If only it were FaceTime and we could just hang up and, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and start it over. <laughs> Namdi, what if you um, sign out and sign back in? You look okay. like you're you're here, Namdi. You're, you're muted, you're muted. Okay, you can see me now, that's good. That seems to have worked. Okay, good, I, I just logged out and came back in. Perfect. Uh, you know, and yes, yeah, so the background, I, um, I don't think it's causing the problem, but if it continues, to, I'll, I'll, I'll deactivate it. Um, let me, I guess what I can do is give you a um, quick update on, um, yeah, the Smith College. So I had them send me a document where they outlined the um, extent of dependence on the Northampton Police Department and I, and I, Thought that I may have sent that around for people to see, but um, did, did you guys get a copy of that document? If not, okay, so maybe that did not send it. That could be. I don't That's, recall it. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. So I can. I'm going to share a screen and, and tell you what, show you what's on it, and, and that way people can see it, and I can share it. But let me say this: uh, an open discussion now about whether um, somebody from Smith should come and speak. Um, and you know, in the ten minutes that there was some room was made, I, I will say that I reached out to the Smith people and put this as a possibility and they, they are a bit ambivalent about it, about like, you know, whether the t that 10 minutes would be the most efficient um, use, you know, wh whether it would help their case or not, but they, they did provide this written statement that I, I will share what's, what's in it. And then we can decide what else we as a subcommittee or as a commission might want from Smith. Um, so let's just proceed with what I asked them to do, which was just to, um, and again, I'm gonna make this document available. I'll send it to Noah so everyone can, can have a copy of it, but let's, let me just go over it now. Um, so I'm hoping you can now she see a screen that says services provided to Smith College by Northampton Police Department. Is that not yet? I don't you cannot see it or you, can anyone see that or not? Yeah, I have my, oh, yes. I can now see it. I, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. I, I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm just cycling in my mind. Are we allowed to do this? Why Share? wouldn't we be? It's something I'm sharing publicly, is, no? Okay, okay. I'm just, I, I'm thinking out loud right now. Um, and I think it's recorded, recorded, and it's public, okay. and, and everything. Everybody can see it. That's why I'm sharing okay. it this way, as opposed to trying to send it. Yeah. Um, Fair enough. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. But but uh, then I'll make the document available later to, to everybody too. Yeah. Anyway, so I asked uh, the the head of public safety, basically the chief of police on the campus, to outline for us kind of what they depend on uh, the Northampton Police for. So here's some things, and it's just a couple pages, so I can just go through it quickly. So it says, um, so any emergency that occurs on campus that could result in the use of deadly force, for example, and I asked them to give me specific examples. In June, 2020, a person walking on campus took a pitchfork from the truck bed of a landscaping vehicle, chased three construction workers. One construction worker ran out in front of a passing uh, NPD vehicle on Elm Street. The person with the pitchfork turned and ran back on campus, throwing the pitchfork back on the truck. It is likely that Smith College campus safety would not be able to subdue a person charging with a pitchfork as a result, NPD would need to be respond quickly. In 2019, an instance of a suicide attempt with the use of weapons. Also in 2019, a domestic violence incident involving the use of weapons, road raid incident on campus where Northampton police assistant was, was needed. In 2020, a person kept coming and breaking into campus buildings. He was chased by campus safety and needed Northampton police assistance. He was finally apprehended and arrested. Um, they also require the help of the Northampton police in processing of crime scenes. So, I guess only Northampton police has the ability um, to assist with lifting fingerprints from actual scene of crime or objects at scene, <clears throat> share knowledge about similar crimes that might be happening in the city that helps narrow down a suspect or an MO of the person committing the, uh, the crime on campus. Um, any unattended death requires the response of Northampton police to assist with the investigation and scene. And I'll just mention in passing, we have had suicides on campuses and deaths. It's not 
frequent, but it, it is surprisingly sort of regular. And, and it's the kind of thing I just want to mention in passing that, you know, it's kind of kept, especially if it's a suicide, it, it, it's kept quiet. So it's not the kind of thing that everybody would know even happened on the campus. Um, and yet, you know, police are brought into this. So I'm raising it's something that's kind of invisible, but happens. I mean, you need to think about it. Okay, um, so assist with investigations where a suspect does not live on campus. So on occasion, visitors to the campus will engage in illegal activity or, or college policy violations. Northampton Police has assisted in identifying and locating subjects that campus safety will need to trespass, charge, interview, or arrest. In 2019, a male was seen exposing himself and openly masturbating. Northampton Police assisted with interviewing witnesses and with the arrest of the male when he was apprehended by campus safety. And then when it comes to warrants, arrests, and bookings, all bookings and arrests must be completed by the Northampton Police at the, their department. All interviews and interrogations must occur at the Northampton Police due to state law requiring uh, regarding mandatory taping and video footage of any kind of interrogation. As far as motor vehicle spots, this is a, this up David's alley. Uh, campus safety officers have the duty to initiate a motor vehicle stop, however, do not have the authority to issue state citations. So Northampton Police can issue citations based on what was witnessed by the campus safety officer. The campus safety have made good, have made good motor vehicle stops in the past with the support of Northampton Police. And they give an example. The Northampton Police assisted with a road rage incident that happened on Elm Street, finished at Smith College Campus Center involving campus mail truck driver. Uh, they mentioned mental health and wellness checks. If the subject of well-being check lives off campus, campus safety will respond with Northampton Police. Major medical emergencies, all major medical situations involving high-risk patients. We can, I don't know what that exactly means drug overdoses. And then finally, miscellaneous incidents requiring Northampton Police um, support. Unwanted male guest was confronted by campus safety and was uncooperative. Northampton Police responded as to the backup officer and were unable to gain entry into the building. I don't know exactly what that means, but it says Northampton officers sustained an injury while apprehending the fleeing suspect. All right, so again, I'll share that with everybody, but the intent in sharing this with you is just to have an, you know, I think it falls squarely in our, in our group because it's about policies and services currently you know, happening with the Northampton Police Department. And if we make changes, thinking about how much of that would need to be retained, how much of that could be replaced with some other entity, um, but just, and, and I would say, of course, if you have any questions from that that you'd like me to take back to the chief of, you know, to the Northampton, I'm sorry, the Smith Public Safety, anything you want clarified, anything you want, I, I can be the conveyor of that and bring it back to, the, to this group. Namdi, I, I just have two questions. Um, are, is the Smith campus uh, security, are they armed now or not? No, they are not. And, and we had a vote long ago where the students, um, it, it, as you can imagine, it, it, was, a, it was controversial. It, I would say the, you know, the campus safety officers would have preferred to be armed and the right. students overwhelmingly voted to not have them armed. And so they're yeah. not armed. And my my and second question is, um, I've been around long enough to, to remember when Smith had a, they, they were a separate entity and then they merged with uh, uh, some of the other colleges to form one police force. Is it my understanding now that they've disbanded that and gone back yes, to having no. their own force? That's correct. Thank you for bringing that up. So yeah, there's a history where exactly as you laid it out and it was only in the last couple of years where they made the decision that they wanted to retain um, the, the control of their own public safety. Um, and part of the reason for that was to, was to was because, they, as you may recall, there were a few incidents on campus, some of them sort of racially tinged of officers confronting you know, people for just sort of seeming to just be black on campus, suspicious, you know, that kind of stuff. And so I think the college wanted more control uh, and wanted, you know, their own central kind of control of the public safety. And so, so yes, they've, they've just recently brought in a new, I, sh I should mention, um, woman police officer I, uh, who I've gotten to know a little bit and who's the chief. And she um, actually at one point was working at Virginia Tech and was actually there for the Virginia Tech um, shootings when that happened. Mm -hmm. um, so I just wanna mention that. So she's somebody who kind of has a sense of some of these issues as they can play on college campuses. And, and how many officers do they have now? I, they, there, I don't know the answer to that. Let me okay. make a note and I can happily get you that information. Um, yeah, just curious. It's yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how large the police force is um, now, and um, so I can find that. It's it's my understanding. Um, UMass, where I work, um, not my understanding, but they have what is called, and I don't really know what this means. Police powers, so they can issue tickets, they can make arrests, they can do all those things that I think Smith Safety cannot do. It, it sounds like they cannot do those things. It, it, I think that's right, and I can double check it. But I, that sounds correct to me. But I'll double check what like 
you know, based on that, what was sent to us, I think you get the sense there's, that there's certain powers they don't have. They clearly don't have arrest. They say that clearly, you know. Um, and then, of course, I, you know, one thing I learned was this idea of you know, interrogation and questioning people has to happen in Northampton Police. Just that's a service that we should, you know, be just be thinking about that. And David, as, a, as an attorney, does that sound right to you that that if people need to be questioned, that, that the police department is one of the few places that could happen legally? Or what do you think? Um, I mean, I, I I don't know any reason why it would it would uh, have to happen there. I think that the the um, Let's put it this way: There is a there is now a strong preference that all um, interrogations be video recorded, and it may just be that Smith doesn't have the uh, facility to do that. Um, so I, I suspect so that, that that's what it is, and and um, and you know just the 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 the, the, the booking process uh, may be just something that they don't, uh, they're, they're not set up to do. And it would be understandable because, you know, the, 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 it, it, it appeared to me from your list that, you know, we're talking about a handful of cases over a couple of years, which is consistent with my experience. I, as, as you were talking, I can remember in my entire career having two cases from Smith College, um, neither of which was very substantial. One involved somebody hitting somebody with a snowball and the other was a an allegation of rape by one Smith student against another Smith student that really kind of didn't go very far. Um, so I think it, I think we're talking about a small volume uh, here. And that's helpful too that you have some some knowledge of the accumulation over time. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you for that, David. I, I'd like to say a couple of things. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm 99 percent certain. I. I the Smith Smith Security Force does not have police powers. UMass is the only place that uh, that functions exactly like police. They have to have much of the same training as police. But that being the case, the functioning of security at Smith College seems no different than uh, the functioning of security at any institution in our county. And I, I just, that's a question. I mean, I, I don't see how it would be any different whatsoever. I mean, you, you wouldn't have um, uh, a security guard, a security person at ServiceNet do an interrogation with legal consequences for, for somebody. Um, and I don't, I wouldn't think that security at Smith could do any any more so, but unless they have some quasi police powers, but my impression is that they don't, they just have a relationship, a good, a close relationship with the local police and, and they don't function in any way uh, as, um, as police. Uh, the, and, they're, and they're not, they're called security. Whereas at UMass, I think they're called police. They're police officers, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Smith, we were campus police. I think you know, we gravitated towards public safety um, and the language of the of what to call it. But but you're but you're quite right that functionally, the powers are limited. And just to give you a, again, my sense is if we were to uh, look into a, like a, a call log, you know, for the campus police in a normal year outside of COVID, I think the bulk of their activities are like uh, letting people back into their rooms when they've gotten locked out. Like there's a lot of that. Like you know, providing you know just. They've got the keys to the buildings and stuff. I mean, you know, they're sort of helpers on campus off hours a lot of the time. So, um, but in bringing this up, I, I just really wanted to be thinking again uh, in the way we would think about like a school resource officer that we have this sort of campus that's part of the part of Northampton and um, and things sometimes happen on campuses that, I, you know, it's, it's young people, you know, again, Smith compared to other campuses, the fact that it's a single sex or uh, historically a woman's college, um, I think we have less, um, less, you know, uh, we don't have fraternity, you know, parties and events that kind of might happen in other places. Yet it's also known as kind of a liberal progressive Mecca and, you know, um, and could be targeted for some kind of domestic, you know, terror kind of situation. If somebody wants to think along those lines, the School for Social Work is very active in the summer and they, 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 they do bring, they are, uh, again, very progressive and, and organized and, and, you know, so it's a place where the college campus level stuff can happen and and you got to think about what who kind of can monitor the safety in those situations 
and what's the relationship between the campus police and some sort of outside entity you know as we reform so i i don't see this as as having any di difference from any other organization in northampton except for perhaps one which it's almost the exact same relationship. And that's security at Cooley Dickinson Hospital where there are frequent events. And I am familiar with that. Um, but uh, they probably have the most frequent institutional need for police intervention of anybody, of any place in our, in our city. Um, more so, yes, definitely more so than any other place I can think of. And, um, and that actually, that relationship would be interesting to explore and what types of MOU, uh, what kind of MOUs that police has with, uh, with the hospital. And do, does, does the, um, do the police have a formal MOU with Smith College? They do, they do. Did, did you happen to see it? They've shared it with me, but I, I have to get their permission about disseminating it more widely. So is it, um, is it a boilerplate, we agree to help you and you agree to help us? Um, I have to say, I have not read it very closely. I, I will, and, and, and again, if, if it's, um, I don't think, they, no, no, one said, no one said I could not share it, but I think I'd rather check with them before yes, I kind of- Yes, of course, of yeah. course. Um, and, but, um, but I do have it, and your question about, you know, kind of, is it boilerplate? You know, I, I, I'd have to take a look at it, a closer look than I took. I'll look at it while we're talking, but look, tell me, I mean, I, you know, I'm not opposed to uh, us thinking about such a thing for the, for the hospitals, for, the, for Cooley Dickinson Hospital, excuse me, as a um, follow-up to this, but I, um, yeah, so please continue, Nick. I, I'm not, I don't want to cut you off. You're, you're making a point. I'm going to go, I'm looking up the MOU while you talk. Okay, we can hear you, but your video is frozen. I don't, okay. I'm not, oh. my point, my point is only, I'm not sure that we, we should spend a lot of time on this. I just, I feel, I feel like the, the, this is, there, there are many, many community agencies um, and the, the, the most high, high profile one with the most incidents of, 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 of police utilization probably is the hospital and the emergency department in particular. Um, but they're sometimes called to the mental health unit and uh, occasionally to other units. So um, I, I'm just saying, I don't know um, what deserves our attention here I, 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 at yeah. this point. Sure, sure. Well, well I don't I think need to make the case that we should spend a lot of time. Oh, go ahead, Cynthia. Yeah. Oh, Cynthia. I, I, I think in the, in the spirit of what I think our committee is supposed to be doing is that we're reviewing policies, practices, and procedures, and this is uh, one relationship uh, and Cooley Dickinson is an interesting one as well that rely on the Northampton Police Department and reporting that out is important. Solving it is, is something else, you know, it, it's gonna be, we wanna list those functions that the police department is doing and that helps us to understand how to move some functions off into another department. So uh, to me, it's sort of, it's very good information that, that there's these two entities that are relying on the police department and now we have examples of how. Um, okay. And I, I'm not sure I can answer, well, I, I don't wanna jump the gun here, but I think there is going to be some kind of an NPD. I don't know what it is, but it may be continuing to provide that fingerprinting service or, or maybe it doesn't have to, I, I just don't know. So that's the way I'm sort of looking at it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't think we need to spend a lot more time on this. Okay. Um, I, what you said, Cynthia, about reporting it out, like I would like to see to it that the fact of this relationship somehow appear in the final report that such a relationship currently exists. It's one of the things the North Police does, and some future entity has to think about how to replace it or, or solve it. But but you know, highlighting what the, what the needs are, and I guess the only thing I would add, uh, just to contrast with Nick's statement, is is um, in this whole process, I I definitely am a person who keeps coming back to this theme of thinking about the role of police in rare events. So I heard from Nick 
you know, sort of that we should focus on Cooley Dickinson because there's a high frequency of involvement. And, and I don't contest that, sure. But at the other hand, there are still the matter of like emergencies and rare events. And I think, I, you know, just think ahead to like, if there was some huge, you know, terrorist attack on the Smith campus, lots of young college Absolutely. were killed. And then what it, it comes back to the fact that Northampton Police Department, Northampton Policing Commission decided to dismantle uh, the relationship between the police department and Smith College, otherwise they would have been protected. I mean, think about the conversation people are having about the Capitol riots and about, you know, why wasn't there um, support and protection, right? So I think we want to make sure that that if we, if they're vulnerable entities, even if they aren't attacked regularly, that we just keep in mind that removing police or changing police, we have to think about what replaces them for certain situations. That's the only point I want to make. And, and I think Smith was just off our radar until, until recently. Um. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and in, in, the, in the field of risk management, you have to balance um, frequent events that are lower risk and rare events that are higher risk uh, because you have to be able to address both. Uh, so um, that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, but if we're gonna pursue it, I, I don't think it would hurt to have somebody from Cooley Dick talk to us for a few minutes uh, and because that, I think that would really challenge us in some ways. I think that we will hear about situations that we will need to think about, well, how, how else could we be addressing that? Because they're highly dependent on the police. Um, Namdi went out and I assume he's coming back in. Yep. Um, but what do you think of that? I think it's a good idea. I don't think it's a full commission. No, oh, no. Um, but um, I, I just want to make sure we're not um, making an argument that, I, I think you know what I'm going to say, making an argument because of Smith and, and Cooley Dickinson that we can't make changes in the police department because they rely on the police department. I just don't want that, I don't want that flavor or that impression to come out. And if the more time we spend on it, I think the more, the more the, the some folks see it that way. <laughs> and I don't think we do, I, but. I, I'm okay with that. Um, and I, I, I hear what you're saying. I'm okay with that to the extent that I know that it's very challenging. I know that they're gonna, yeah. they're gonna come in. I know what they're gonna say. They're gonna say, we get, uh, situations that are totally beyond our control uh, and we need help. And, yeah. and I, I think rather than spending a lot of time on that, I think we have to say there needs to still be something to address that, but we may even be able to divert a good portion of that as well. Uh, so, uh, but to brainstorm or if, I, I, I think they need to be, Part of the discussion at some point, but I, I don't have a need to spend a lot of time on it. I think it's a foregone uh, conclusion that they uh, pretty much what they're going to say. I, and, and I don't, I, I mean, I think that they, they will just say we have a, I, I, know, I, I, I know of many specific situations that they've turned over to the police. And I, I've been on calls with the police in the hospital where the police, um, uh, the, the police just um, were totally frustrated. They they didn't want to be dealing with it. They they said this is a hospital problem, not us. But right. they were called in to to address it. Yeah, I was just going to say that. I mean, most of the ones that uh, you're, I'm sure you're much more familiar than I am, Nick. But uh, I mean, I've had a few cases out of Cooley Dickinson, and and it, it just raises the question that's been raised, sort of at the core of what we've been doing is. A lot of these are mental health calls. Um, and, oh yeah, oh I, almost all of them. Almost all of them. Yeah, and 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 I I think we should move on because I think Cynthia is right. I mean, I okay. mean, we we have to we have to consider this as something, but but I think we're talking overall volume, not a huge amount. You know, we're we're talking about um, Smith. We're talking about the college, but you know, all the big grocery stores, uh, they they're they're in the same boat. They have security forces. They don't have power of arrest. Um, so, right. you know, we can't, 
cater policing to what these private entities need. I think we consider it as a part of the overall picture, but I don't think we can cater to them. So anyway, that's my thoughts. Okay, then with everybody's agreement, we'll move on. Uh, what should we do about Cooley Dickinson though? Should we mention it, uh, invite them to this subcommittee? Should we, um, I just wanna make sure we- I would be willing to call the uh, administration in the emergency department and ask them what kind of input they would like to have. And maybe they can submit something in writing. Uh, and That's not, a good idea. not take up meeting time. I would be yeah. glad to do that. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's up to them whether they want to and or 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 even reach out to uh, uh, Joanne Marcusy, who is the uh, uh, executive. But I, I, I'll figure that out. I'll, I'll, I, I will follow that up. Thank you, Nick. And Namdi, you said the police department, uh, the Smith Safety Department may be reluctant to come or well, put anything in writing or? Yeah, they put something in writing, which I will share with you, everything I just okay. gave you and, and any questions you have. I guess I'm just, I think it was the issue of the, the, the 10 minutes, like what would be the value of them presenting in 10 minutes? Would yeah. they walk into a situation where they'd be on the defensive? Is it to inform? I, I think it has to do with kind of how our commission is perceived, I guess. Um, in the town and kind of what you know our, our agenda is and how, what, what's the position of, of Smith coming in. Um, so I think if we were to you know, kind of clarify what, if we wanted them to come, you know, um, uh, you know what we would want. And, and I think that, that they'd be willing to do it. But my own feeling about it is that we might have accomplished just because of the reaction I just got, like maybe just presenting this, you know, if I could boil this stuff down to like a couple to a paragraph and Included somewhere in the report that Smith College relies on Northampton Police, a couple of vivid examples of things that happen rarely, and that you know anything that goes forward um, should be thinking about, you know how to how to address these kinds of situations in the new vision for policing, um, something like that. It, yeah, but and not not overlooking. I mean, I'm not quite where, where Nick is, where where he makes the claim that uh, Smith is just the same as everywhere else. I, I you know, maybe it's my attachment because they're my employer. I, I really do think a college campus is a is a real different entity. Um, and I think historically, its relationship with policing, if I could just maybe dwell on this for one second, um, you know, has actually been quite different in, in sort of complicated ways. And if I can summarize it very briefly, it seems to me the colleges and universities for a very long time have been this kind of zone, this sort of lawless zone where young people can come and sort of bend the law and break the law and kind of have fun and people kind of look the other way. And, and then when it gets really bad, maybe they'll need to call a police officer in to kind of, to, to kind of deal with it. But they, you know, whether it be drug use, whether it be, you know, looking the other, winking and nodding over other kinds of, um, you know, mischievous behavior. So I, I, think, I think it lent, they can be places where stuff kind of happens and things can get out of hand. It's one of the reasons why, you know, I sent you guys the, information about the, the riot in Keene, which also was a college student festival gone awry. Um, anyway, so I, I think that the kinds of things that could emerge, the sort of crowd control incidents and the kind of, also the, ba the bad PR for the town, and, um, you know, I, I think it's different than a supermarket. I, I, I guess I, I, I really would like to challenge the notion that uh, you can substitute CSO and a supermarket and, every, and it's all equal to Smith College. I don't think that's right. I just, I, I it's, it, it's worth looking at, but I also want to say uh, the Cutchen Center is, is a, uh, a, a closed community um, that relies on the police on a regular basis for certain situations. ServiceNet is a closed community that re, uh, uh, is less closed than, than Cutchen's um, that relies on the police frequently. And, I, and I, I'm just saying, it, it just it, Smith is the biggest. It, it, there's no doubt it's the biggest, but these other programs have uh, defined populations they're working with that require regular interactions mm -hmm. with the police that could be that they could be substituted. Yeah, let me say also I, I do agree, Nick, with what you said about like not cater. I'm not calling for catering to Smith. I mean, that's not the point. I just want to make sure that we include all the major constituents that would be affected by changes we're making. That that's all, and that we kind of are clear-eyed about that and can kind of put that out there as we start to think about future. Okay. Um, it, if it's okay, I, I might ask some of these other places if they want to contribute something in writing uh, and uh, not not take up our meeting time. Yeah, I think that'd be great. Can I okay. make one thing about, about uh, thank you for raising the Cooley Dickinson example, Nick, and I, I just want to suggest, it's up to you if you want to follow this, but I would love to, if you 
when you communicate with them, what I would like is a question about where they could sort of describe to us where the police have been helpful or how they've been helpful. Like, I'd like to understand more about like little episodes of what the police actually do. Um, so like, for example, a question in the back of my mind is, you know, you also often have police accompanying ambulances. You know, people get picked up and, and need to get rushed to the hospital. The police might follow there. I'm not sure I fully understand the role of the police officer um, as they interact with Willie Dickinson. It'd be great to have them explain to us what, what, I mean, you may already know this answer, but it'd be good to have a little bit of that. What exactly, with an eye towards, could, could this, could this be, could someone else do this? Could, could an unarmed person do this? That's what I'm really looking for. Um, what, what is it that the police are doing that they really feel they need the police for? Um, I can, I can give you a brief answer of two yeah. things. Um, one, one is if they are at the initial incident that ended up in the ambulance being called, they go to the hospital to report um, what the event was so that the people meeting with the person have an understanding of why an ambulance was called. I, uh, um, uh, often uh, people will get to the hospital and the story won't match what happened. And so the police give that, that account. The other um, the other thing is that sometimes the police are called to manage an aggressive person in the, in the uh, in one of the departments, usually the emergency department, and um, uh, the staff maybe maybe a staff was injured during a restraint, maybe a a, 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 a patient is barricaded somewhere, um, maybe. There are times uh, maybe there's only one security guard present in the hospital, and the and the hospital staff feel they need more um, uh, force to contain a person. Those are the kinds of situations, and and how it goes. It's a good question. It's a good question. There's one okay. quick thing to add. Then um, I'm reminded in my conversations with Smith, but I first explained to them what we wanted. The first reaction was. You know, if the Northampton Police Department is sort of cut in size, so there's fewer officers to respond, they were really focusing on, on the, will we get a timely response in an emergency? So we don't really need them much, but when we need them, we want them quickly. And your account, Nick, made me think about this, about a, the Wallone security guard in, in Cooley Dickinson Hospital, you know, who, in your case, you say they call them frequently, um, who need somebody quickly to kind of deal with a violent situation. So again, in, in our actions to reduce the footprint, would we make it difficult to get a quick response um, in an emergency? I'll find that's... out how frequent too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the next item on the agenda is was initiated by Elizabeth and I put it on there because she brought it up and I thought it was worth a conversation and she wanted to, she's, as we're talking about what do we want to go into this report, what do we want to focus on, she wanted to say, have we had a discussion of core values? And I want to, I have that on the agenda, um, but Elizabeth isn't here to drive it. And I turn it over to all of us to see if, if we want to spend specific time on that as a topic. I think we should wait for Elizabeth uh, to do that because I'm not sure exactly what she's driving at. Okay. I do remember her saying that she wasn't sure, not what our task is, but just exactly what we're doing here. I remember that that sort of um, dissonance in, in, you know, in her, she just, she just wanted a review, like, are we, commenting on procedures? Are we reporting procedures? What are those, and have we done enough? You know, so maybe that's a direction. Well, that I think is a legit question. I ask myself that all the time. As, <laughs> yeah. as, as you know, Cynthia, I, yeah. a, um, a month or more ago, thought that these subcommittees had outlived their usefulness and that we could reform the committees uh, with with different focus um, and that uh, that idea did not get any traction um, but when I when I try to think about what we're doing I, I sometimes get a little frustrated in that 
here, here's an example, um, police services. Since the very first meeting, uh, I've been hearing about police do property checks. I still don't know what that is. And I don't know when they do them or why they do them. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's a police service that apparently they do an awful lot of. And um, I didn't get around to asking the chief about. Um, I have a lot of questions. Uh, and again, I, you know, I didn't, it was by the time we finished up with the chief, it was after eight and I didn't want to start, uh, you know, a, a long list of things that I didn't have answers to. But um, uh, an, another area is that, that we haven't really talked about that I would put in the category of police services is calls for suspicious persons. Um, one of the questions I, I wanted to ask the chief was, how do you deal uh, with these calls? In other words, to take an extreme case, somebody said, well, maybe it's not that extreme. I mean, given what's happened up at the campus, uh, Namdi, you know, uh, there's a black person hanging around here. He doesn't look like he fits in. Yeah, that, that has yeah. happened a couple well, times. That happened yeah. at Smith. That yeah. happened, we all I know mean, it happened at Smith. We, yeah. we, we are, my office is currently representing a black employee at UMass who uh, police came and cornered in his office and questioned him because someone reported that there was a black guy walking across campus with a duffel bag yes. um, and appeared, appeared to be very worked up and, and, and angry. Um, police went and, you know, put him in this very intimidating situation. It, it's, it's a public document. We're litigating it now against the university. So, but, my, but anyway, apropos of this discussion, my, the question I wanted to ask for the chief is, do you as police officers do your own reassessment? Or in other words, do you, if somebody calls and says this person looks suspicious, do you just go and question the person? Or do you say, well, what about him looks suspicious? I mean, other than it's a black person on the Smith College campus, what else is suspicious? Um, and, and, and do you say, um, uh, you know, I'm sorry, that, that's not, uh, that doesn't sound suspicious to me. We're not going to respond to that. Now, I'm sure the chief would say, you know, in that situation, we're damned if we do, we're damned if we don't. Um, but I, it's something, it's a police service that I don't think we've really looked into sufficiently. Mm -hmm. And see, when I, when I was, it, it, I, I, I love all you people. I enjoy seeing you on Monday nights, but it, that was not my reason for, for proposing to disband this particular subcommittee. I thought, and I still think that we would have been better off because of the overlap between policies and services and funding and alternatives. I thought it would have been a much better idea to sort of divide up by services. Let's have one person, let's have one subcommittee to deal just with traffic. Let's have another subcommittee to deal just with mental health. Let's have another one to deal with um, suspicious person calls or whatever. Anyway, you see where I'm going, and I guess there's it's a little late in the day for that. So, um, but I but I share Elizabeth's concern in that I sometimes feel like here we are, Nick. That shocked me when you said this is the tenth subcommittee meeting. Wow, I take it your math is correct. But yet here are a couple things that police do a lot of that we don't have answers to, and then there are all these like little things that I've never understood, except that Cynthia told me that uh, there's, I mean, these animal calls, why do police go on animal calls? Why do they even come into the police department? Um, these are all policies and services that I think need to be addressed, even though they're not the big ticket items that, you know, people are concerned about. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I agree with you, David, and I've always viewed this committee as informative reporting 
and we plowed through the website and I think we, we got derailed there, but the, we, we need to make a list of things to ask the chief, like the property checks, like traffic more succinctly, because we really, our time is running out and we've got to wrap this up. Um, and I, I'm not saying, I, I can tell you that the other committees, now that I'm sitting in on all of those, are operating in a much, um, their, fo their focus seems to be clear. Ours does not seem to be clear. And so um, we have got to somehow um, um, resurrect our focus, find out what it is, um, start closing the loop on some of these things. Um, like property checks is a great example, and even more on traffic too, the traffic stop situation. I think we need to ask the police um, more direct questions and we don't have to bring her here, but we have that ability to send her questions. And, um, just try to wrap this up. I mean, I was doing domestic violence and I quickly discovered that Alternatives is doing domestic violence. So I just turned over everything to them because what do I do with domestic violence? As the chief said, they're required to respond by law. <laughs> you know, it's more of how they respond when they get there. So I don't know. I, and I, I thought that's what Elizabeth was getting at. And so uh, values is a broader discussion, but I think we need to find out how we want to, as you keep saying, Nick, how we're, what we're going to put in the final report. Um, we need to know what that is. <laughs> well, um, I, um, Nick, you probably want to say something a little like you, you, you always look at about hanging back. Why don't you jump in? I can tell you. <laughs> Go ahead, Namdi. Um, yeah, so I, I guess I just wanted to. Um, Agree with a lot of what has been said, but more importantly, I guess maybe just respond a little bit to what, what David had to say about uh, the, the what we don't know about property checks. I guess I just wanted to mention that um, I think the chief said something about that. It was in passing, but she was she put it on the list of preventive activities that she believes the police do. And so if we revisit the video, it might be a, a thing to note, and we certainly can ask more about it. But I do think we we got some information about what what they think they're doing. I think they think that because they patrol regularly around properties that that is keeping people from breaking into people's cars and people's houses. And it, it, it's, a, she, I think she would argue, it counts for why we don't have more crime in Northampton, those kinds, but let, you know, and then it's, but I would say the thing, the thing you brought up about the suspicious persons made me think that I, I might be interested in hearing more from dispatch. This is one other thing we learned from the chief was that dispatch is a separate thing to the police. And I would like to understand that relationship more because along the lines of what David said, I don't know if there's a way again for us to get somebody to speak to us or get some kind of document that helps us to clarify who those people are and how they make the calls. Because I think um, I think that's relevant and doesn't eliminate David's point about even if dispatch does a good or bad job, whatever the police does once they get the call, they could still decide they're not going to follow up with a suspicious black person. So I think that's a good question. Um, I think those are the main points I wanted to make is just to, I guess maybe to invite a little bit of a conversation about do we want to hear more about dispatch and how would we get that um, at this point? Um, and finally, I want to say that I do feel like this subcommittee is maybe in some ways kind of winding down. I, I keep thinking that what we do is, is worthwhile. Like whenever we have the conversation about like, what are we doing here? What are our values? I guess what I would point to is I'm struck by whenever we go back into the public, into the full commission and we get public comment, there's always a, a fair amount of negative comment about what we're doing and why we're doing it. And so what that says to me, it, it says many things. Obviously the people are, some people are negative about what we're doing but it says that what we're doing is not exactly what everyone else is doing. It, it seems to me that, it, that I, I don't think our work is entirely redundant. I think anything that we do that sort of characterize, like I think nobody else has their eye on the, what the Northampton Police Department is doing now. We get statements like that first sentence about white supremacy and the Northampton Police because there is this kind of substitution for like the ills of the world all get sort of land on the Northampton Police without any real data. People are happy to just say the Northampton Police you know, are Satan without any kind of, uh, reference to actually what they're really doing. And I think our commission is the one that's trying to at least flesh out what they're doing and not doing and what they ought to be doing better. And then the other subcommittees are, are going to do the how they could be doing it better. So to me, like I think everything we've done has been has been worthwhile doing. Um, we just have to think about winding down so we can get to a, a final result. Yeah. That's my... I, I, I'm, I'm going to take a slightly contrarian perspective but but more in the in the direction of it's not it's not contrarian it's it's kind of consistent i think we're almost done and i'll tell you 
I'll tell you why. I've been, I needed to look at all of these things to know if there was some glaring dysfunction in our police department other than the fact that it's a policing institution. And as we looked at the website, and as we looked at the policies on mental health, which were sensitively written, as we looked at, uh, as we listened to the way they strive to interact with houseless individuals, as we look at, um, I'm gonna put traffic aside for a moment, as, as we look at the complaint procedure, which is kind of a standard complaint procedure for, a, 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 and the complaints were thoroughly investigated. Um, my point is, where I'm, where I'm heading is, I wanna focus on three or four issues with the assumption because none of this works for me if we're not, if we don't have a common agreement that we need another department to start um, look, start becoming an alternative to policing. Because m m where I'm going is we don't have the time, the skills, or the ability to look into all of these things. And the police are competent at looking into all of these things. What's missing from my perspective is a, a core system, a, a core system that has um, a, a strategic plan with values that talk about social equity and, and addressing marginalized populations, something that ties into the city of Northampton, having uh, 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 some, some kind of um, public statement and, and that I, I think it was Michael who submitted that proposed department of, of uh, human rights or, or something like, what's it called? Um, I had it here before, I don't, I don't have it in front of me. Um, but the, 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 I think that we need a, depart, a, a community safety department combined with human rights and we need to say the police department needs to start addressing these things, but we, we're not paid full-time investigators. We don't have the capacity to tell them how to all do all of these things. What I can say is I don't see any glaring um, dysfunction in the police department except for um, their inability to manage certain union issues, which I don't have a good solution for. But, but aside from that, they can come up with better policies if they have a mission and a plan that says they're gonna be looking for alternatives and they're gonna be trying to address the needs of marginalized populations. That to me is the core of what I wanna be recommending. I, 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 I wanna be saying, you need to come up with these things. We're not going to come up with these things. You need to start having a, a, a strategic plan and a mission that says, um, and, and they, they, they have the basis for it. They, they, um, uh, uh, Chief Casper's brought into hiring. Um, she has worked on diversity and she's been pulled back a little bit by the cutbacks, but having a more diverse staff. But it has to go beyond that. Um, all of the decisions um, uh, need, need to tie in. And I'm, I'm noticing that Robert is saying community needs to create the alternatives. They need to work with the community on these alternatives. They need to be part of it. That's my point. That it's, it's not, the, it, they have to kind of get on board with the fact that they need to be also looking for ways to divert these things. And I, I feel that's all, that there's not a lot we can do to change it, except I think it starts with mission and strategic planning. And I, I think that's, that the rest of it is, come, is our focus on a community alternative. I, I feel, and I feel we need to go back to the commission um, and say, we're, we're ready to, to, to help work on that, on, on the alternatives because 
that's what the police need to be working on as well. You know, Nick, I really have to disagree with you. If, okay. If, if, if you're waiting for the police to work with you to divest themselves of the things they do, that is never going to happen. Uh, and, and as much as I like Jody Casper personally, and I think she's a, a, a good police chief, I think what we saw last week is she is a very nice person. She's as progressive a thinker as you can expect in a police chief, but at the end of the day, she's a cop. And I don't mean that in, a, in any pejorative way. It's who she is. She's a cop. And, um, and her attitude is going to be, yes, Nick, you're right. We can do a better job in all these things. If we just train better and we work harder, we can do all of these things. And, and, and that is going to lead to us accomplishing nothing uh, because it, it's what, what I've learned in, in, in the however long it's been that we've been doing this now uh, is I've examined things. I thought I knew a little bit about this when I got on this after 40 years as a lawyer. And I have learned a, a lot of stuff. I've thought about stuff in ways that I've never thought about things. And I am absolutely convinced that a vast majority of what police officers do, do not need to be done by police officers, shouldn't be done by police officers. And that it's up to us to tell them, we don't need, you, you know, thank you for your service. We still want you to, if my house is being broken into and there's somebody banging on my door trying to get in, yes, I want the police to show up. Um, but we don't need you to do a lot of things. And it's time we take a lot of the money that goes to the police department and invest it in other uh, aspects of, uh, of the community. And I just don't think you can, you can, I don't think you can expect the police to uh, be a part of that solution, Nick. They're, they're never going to agree that they are not the best people to be doing exactly what they've been doing. So um, I, I will also uh, back the general tenor of what David just said. The thing I object to the most, in, in, Nick, in, your, in your, your kind of framing is to put the police behind the driver's seat. I, I don't think, so I do think that the, the change will need to be managed from outside the police. Um, but I, but where I agree with you, Nick, is, is I have a vision of more partnership with the police in this transformation. So, but I don't think that I don't I don't see them leading it. I don't I don't see the ball being put in their court and saying you write this or you know we'll give you the strategic plan, but you have to follow. I, I think they I think they're going to need outsiders to tell them what to do. But I would like in my vision, I would imagine that we would start certainly start with the things that they already agreed. So I think you're going to get like not a lot of fighting from them that somebody else could handle mental health better than they're doing it. And if, and if somehow there is this question of responsibility, who's ultimately responsible when things go wrong. So again, if a mayor or a city council takes on the responsibility to designate that work to some other group and tells the police, you know, you're sort of out of this work now or traffic or whatever it is, you know, it's no longer your responsibility. Um, so I, I, I the, my main problem is expecting that within the organization, they're going to be able to manage this. And I, I don't think you need to see nefarious reasons. I, I just think it's hard for people. I think it's hard for people. And I think that my dealings with police officers over many, many years in my research, I just don't think that they are sort of generally speaking bred for this, that police breeds black and white kind of thinkers. Um, they, they are good at like making decisions on the fly. They make terrible errors on the fly, but they're sort of organized to good guy, bad guy. Like it, it's, nuance is not necessarily, you know, Jody Casper is cheap is unusual, I think in that way, but I think generally speaking, it's hard to get that culture to get behind the nuance that I think is needed. So somebody outside needs to help manage it, I would say. But I don't think it's that far off from what you said, Nick, but I definitely wouldn't want them driving this car. Can I respond or Cynthia, do you yeah. want to say something? Because you haven't. Um, well, I'm, I'm, um, I would agree. And um, with David and, and Namdi, I, I just think the accountability factor um, should not rest with the police. And in some ways I'm not, I don't, for them to be accountable to themselves. I think we need this other, um, as one person said to me, you know, the, the people that should be running this is the people that they're serving, which is the community. And so um, I, um, 
I think um, there's no reason, I, I'm not gonna go into this, the demonization of the police department because um, we have so much testimony that says there's definitely a problem there. And so I think we have this opportunity and I'm pretty sure there's a consensus in the commission about this department, whether we call it community care or safety, we have enough reports now of how this is working throughout the country. Um, but what goes into it, who's gonna man all those kind of structural things have yet to be determined. Um, and I, I think the, the police are now at this, I wanna be on the right side of history and this time in history, the police are gonna to have to step back and they're gonna to have to listen and they're gonna to have to take the recommendations, however the city council does this um, via policy and they're going to have to change because they are who they are. And I don't, I'm not faulting them for that. They are who they are. In some ways they're the victim of this, um, you know, we call it systemic racism, which I know is a, is a catchphrase that people jump back on, but they're the victim of how we've uh, militarized the police, the criminal justice system, the prison industrial com complex. It's all wrapped up into one ball here. And uh, now is the time to do something different. So I don't think they should drive the process. So let me respond. I, I, I think I'm not being, I, I think I'm not communicating something because I don't disagree with, with what you're saying. What, what I'm saying is they need to be accountable to this other entity and that, and that, um, and they're going to have to work with the other entity. Um, uh, but, but I don't see how we have the resources to micro analyze all of their, their services to, I, I mean, I was looking for glaring problems that we might say this needs to happen, but ultimately we want to shift the, the services to somewhere else. But, but in many cases, they're going to have to be working with that other that other entity, and I feel that they need to have in their and maybe what I'm communicating wrong is their mandate should be their strategic plan. Maybe needs to be the city's strategic plan. It 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 needs to be the city that has a plan for how they want to use their police force, and yeah. not. The, not the police making it. The police should sit at the table, but that that the 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 community be making the 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 design and the, the structure. But we don't we can't micromanage this. We we don't have the time to to look at every single service and, and Nick, don't put that on your shoulders. Don't put that on your shoulders, please. We do not have to micromanage this as a subcommittee. All we have to do is report what we found. That's all we have to do. We can throw in a suggestion here and there, see if alternatives wants it or not. But, you know, we have a lot of things. I mean, we, yeah, they have no strategic plan. They couldn't, they had some funding for it, but it had to stop because of COVID. Their website is crappy. It has a lot of stuff in it, but boy, if you are an individual community member who wants to see arrest records versus, you know, it's, and even the chief said herself, she couldn't get down to that level of detail. Um, with her software, and she's very frustrated about that. I mean, I and all we have to do is report. I, I think there's, I, I'm not looking for those flaws in the website, <laughs> you know, just looking to make some connections with what we saw. The, boy, there didn't seem to be this, there didn't seem to be that. So don't take, I don't think we have to put it on our shoulders. Nick, you're absolutely right. We're not qualified to do it. Or at least I don't feel qualified to do it. So maybe we are saying the same thing. I don't know. Well, I'm struggling. To, I'm I'm just struggling to see what what is what it is that we want to contribute to the final report. I mean, wh wh well, I, I I'm happy to try. I don't mean to cut you off, Nick. Are you? No, you're not cutting me off. Go ahead. I, I mean, I I I will answer that. I mean, you. I think at the very first subcommittee meeting we had, I gave you a list of all the things that I could think of that police officers do. 
And I think that we can go back to, this is what, as far as we can tell, these are the things that police officers do. These are the things that Northampton Police Department does. And these are things that we think they don't necessarily have to do. And they could be done by another entity. I think that we probably need to comment on some other policies and services that don't require a lot of comment given, uh, I, I mean, for example, somebody brought up the issue of body cameras. I think it was specific in our charge. I think we're all in agreement that they're, they're just not worth the money. Um, although I have to say, um, in again, calling on my experience of many, many years of, I mean, most, most of my career was in Springfield, um, 28 of my 40 years was in Springfield. And at one time I represented a lot of low income, largely black and Hispanic clients accused of crimes mostly. Um, and I have to say, uh, this always nags at me a little bit on the body camera thing, because I do think that they do, they're not the answer, but they are helpful in the same way as the mass availability of cell phones was, has, was, was uh, helpful. Uh, when I first started in the business, it was not at all unusual for me to have young black men in my office with gashes in their head where they'd been hit over the head uh, with a billy club. I used to see that all the time. After Rodney King, I didn't see that anymore, which again, let me be clear, that doesn't mean police brutality went away meant that men weren't getting hit over the head with with clubs anymore. That's all that it meant. So um, so I feel the same way about body cameras. I've had enough experience with them to know that cops are on their best behavior when they're on camera. Having said that, I, I don't want to get diverted onto that because I do agree with what everyone has said, that, that, that the cost of them and the value of them, I, I, don't, I don't think it merits it. The other thing is um, this whole the idea of civilian review, which you know all of the abolition people have said to us, oh, don't go down that route, you know. Well, I agree that civilian review is not the answer, um, but it seems to me that no matter what we do in this committee, that for the foreseeable future, there is going to be some police department left and I want those people to be accountable. Um, and I have to disagree with the other thing you said, Nick, about their, their uh, complaint process. It's absurdly bad. It is. Um, yeah. it, it, it's ridiculously bad. Uh, I mean, the, the, we can start with you have to make the uh, 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 locations available for police. Uh, and, and, and alternative ways for people to file complaints with the police. It has to be investigated by somebody other than the chief. It has to, the final determination has to be made by somebody other than the chief. Uh, I agree I, completely. I agree with that completely. I mean, I was shocked when I saw what passed for, for the complaint process in Northampton. Um, and uh, I, I can't remember if I shared this or not, but there, there, there's a whole organization that deals with this. And again, I don't think we need to spend a lot of time on this other than to say that the complaint process is inadequate. Uh, it needs to be remedied by bringing um, civilians into, into the process, by uh, expanding the mode of uh, making complaints. Etc. I don't want. I, I agree with those who say it's not the answer, and 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 therefore I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. Um, but I think it's part of the report. Is you got to do something to fix this. So let me ask to give us some focus here. Let let me just ask. What I'm hearing is we have topics. I mean, this is actually the next item on our agenda. We have topics and we each have various topics in mind. And you're, David, you're saying, um, well, Cynthia, you're saying we need to report on what's happening. And David, you're saying we need to report on, do the police need to be doing this? And is there something about this topic 
that immediately needs change. And, and because if we say the police don't need to be doing this, this, and this, that gives guidance for a community safety department. That gives some direction for them to be moving. But it seems to me that our challenge is to list the topics and to, and to come to consensus in our subcommittee what the, the, the main issues are with each area of concern. Is that, am I, is that a direction we should go? It's a good direction. Let me just uh, throw one add to your list. Um, I think we should also be trying to make some statements about what Northampton Police currently does do that we think they probably should keep doing. Yeah, I, I think all oh, of the attention yeah. is on what they should not be doing. And I think that we're the only ones who are going to have any, you know, put anything down about like functions that we think, sure. you know, are worth preserving short term and or long term. I think it's a vital because you know, as people begin to start to look to where, where they're going to make cuts, how they're going to make cuts, they need to understand what needs to be preserved. Um, so I think that is a, another part of our job. David, do you do you feel okay with what I just said? Is that yeah. does that bring us closer together? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And some general comments about because this. I'm not I, I I I'm trying to come just a simple thing like civilian oversight doesn't have a history of success. But your point, David, which I agree with, is we've got to have something different than what we have. Yeah. Right. It's such an important point because I, I want to come back to David's point just to reiterate this that I don't see a path forward from at the end of our work in a month and a half. You know, um, the the immediate future is going to be the police department will still be here, and so I think we should use our time to kind of articulate the kinds of changes we think should happen in the very short term. You know, that within the status quo, while others envision a different future that, that will come eventually. But in the meantime, we want a better complaint system. We want all these things that we think could happen quickly um, and that could address right now. We should, we should I think, again, we're the only ones who will be saying that because everyone else thinks it's a grand waste of time. You know, I think we're the only ones who might have the perspective of, okay, yeah, but we still have to get by tomorrow, next month, the next six months and be able to sort of ask for those kinds of changes um, sooner while they work on the bigger scheme. I think that's right. I mean, I, one, one thing that's been apparent to me for a long time is that, you know, I don't know who's coming after this commission, but there's going to have to be another commission to actually implement all this stuff. And that's where the really hard work is, is going to be. Um, I, I, I mean, you know, my, what has become my pet thing of traffic enforcement, which again, in all honesty, 40 years as a lawyer, I'd never thought about it before this, uh, this commission work. Um, but it, it's not like we can say, okay, as of April 1st, uh, somebody else is going to do traffic enforcement. I mean, I, it, it's become apparent to me that, that at the end of this, we're, we're, that, that all of this is going to have to be phased in some of it, hopefully very quickly, some of it um, is going to take um, a while. Um, I, I mean, you know, I, I, I think that what we need, and I'm probably drifting into general commission stuff here, but I mean, I think what we need to insist upon is the commitment that the change is going to happen. Um, and, and I don't know how we get that. Maybe it's a city council um, resolution or, or whatever to, to set up a further uh, commission or, 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 or whatever to actually implement and with, with real time standards in there. And, and, you know, and since everybody keeps saying, um, you know, the mental health is, is the most obvious one, you know, that, that should happen within a year, say, or, you know, maybe even faster. Um, maybe the traffic takes a little longer. I don't know, but I mean, what I, I just want to be sure that that there is a real buy-in uh, that this is going to happen. That it and that when when our work is done, it's just not going to be forgotten about and become added to the pile of paper that's on every city councilor's desk and on the mayor's desk. Yeah. 
David, can, we, oh, I'm sorry. We, we as a commission cannot um, guarantee that. You know, there are many people working city councilors and the mayor right now trying to get them ready for what it is that we're going to yeah. um, recommend. So I think all we can do is make the recommendations as the commission and then it becomes policy or not, or then it becomes piecemeal or not. Yeah. And Dan, I mean, we're, Dan and I are trying to flush out the final report now, like what are the, what are the bones to it? And, you know, should we propose a timeline? Because it's all tied to budget and all kinds of other things, a new mayor, or should we not? Should we just lay it out and say, this is what we recommend? And you damn well better do it. Well, we can't, you know, th then we've handed it off. We're done. And they're going to have to respond uh, through legislation. Yeah. I would like to encourage us in whatever we write and contribute to try to include our rationale for anything we recommend. I think that would be helpful yeah, yeah. to anybody who's a future, you know, so, and just to give an example of what we've been talking about recently, like when we had the brief discussion about body cameras, I think it would be useful for our subcommittee to have a line on body cameras and to, and I would love to see it include David's phrase about, you know, his experience with how the presence of body cameras has made a real difference and the reasons why you might want it, but then, but we have looked at the budgetary costs and we believe given the level of crime, you know, kind of you sort of say why you arrive at, this may not be worth it at this time, because I think this report will be sitting on someone's desk and it should be more than just recommendations, recommendations with our thinking behind why we're making the recommendations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and thank you, Namdi, for bringing that up because there's the national context and then there's the community in Northampton context, right? Yes. And, yes. and one feeds into the other, but they are, let me say, different to some extent. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, so it's a great point. So with 10 minutes left, <laughs> give, give or take a minute or two. You're the best, Nick. <laughs> and do we want a list? Begin. We're not going to, this won't be exclusive, but do we want to list the topics and then review, maybe in the next meeting, review the topics and get a little consensus among ourselves because I, I don't think it's going to be that hard. Consensus is going to be that hard on most of these issues. But, but to get consensus on what we want to emphasize in discussing each topic. Because in some, we're going to say, this doesn't need to be done. This needs to be done differently. This needs, uh, this is actually something, I don't know what we would say they do well, but maybe something. But, but I, I'm just saying, do, do we want to start a list of, of topics and, and make that begin doing that so we can structure, begin to structure a final report? It sounds good. Nick, I would, uh, maybe a modification of your suggestion. I, I think you've been taking notes on, on such a list. And I'm, I'm wondering if maybe you could get a, such a list started and sent to NOAA to send to us. You know, we could come into the meeting sort of um, with at least with some items on easily. it. I can easily do I I can take... I have notes on what David suggested in the first meeting, I think, I think. <laughs> it, it would mean we, we would all come in with the same list and then we could at least think about like what it is we yeah. And then we have the discussion um, next time. Do, do you want me well, to, I, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say, uh, I'm trying to think ahead of what my week looks like here, but I'm, uh, uh, I'm happy to take my original list and write, a sentence or two after each category as to whatever I think we've discussed about that topic and then pass it on to you, kind of a working document uh, and uh, see where we're at by our next meeting. Uh, yeah. and I'll, I'll try to do that within the next uh, couple days. I don't think it'll take me that long. I'm not gonna write a, a tome on every subject, but just, you know, here's what our discussion has been about this, or this is something we haven't discussed, but here's my thinking on it. it is there a way, um, <laughs> Cynthia, is there a way that we could take that list and, and tweak it uh, before getting back together? Or does that, does that list, there isn't, we have yeah. to do that in the meeting. 
We'd have to give the list. David would have to give it to Noah. To okay, so make but your tweaks. We could have our notes and comments. Yes, yeah. make your tweaks in your head, and that will be the agenda for next meeting. All right. Can I? Um, I I have a conflict, and I just want to see. I, I'm happy to step out of the meeting, but um, I just have another board meeting um, on Monday. Is there any way we can do another time? Earlier? Yeah. Yeah, I could. But let, let me, uh, I got to pull up my calendar. I don't know if that works for you, uh, for David and Namdi though, but please don't do it on my account. Yeah. Well, What's we, your uh, conflict, Cynthia? Just, is it, is it, you have to do it on a different night? No, I could, I, my conflict is Monday at 645. That's when I have to be in this board meeting and we meet at 630 or six. When do we meet? Six. 630, yeah. 630. What yeah. if, we, uh, so, what, when does your 6.45 meeting end? Late? Um, probably um, nine oh, no. but, or before. I could, I could jump out of it. I could jump out of it. What, what are you proposing? I'm happy. I just would like to spend an hour there. They were supposed to meet tonight, but it's a holiday. So they moved we're, it to next week. So my, I've got a meeting that on that day that ends at 4.30. After that, I'm free. Um, so I could do earlier, like five or something like that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm free that day at the moment. How about 4.30? Or 4.45, so Nandi can... 4, 4.45 to 6.15. Yeah. That'd be wonderful, but... but... Yeah, and, and, and even 4.30 is okay. My, my meeting before, should I can make sure I'm out by 4.30. So if that would be better for people, I can do that. Thank you Whatever, all right? so much. Appreciate it. Because I think this will be an important one to wrap up. I just wish Elizabeth was here because I want to, I don't want to, you're right, um, Nick. She had this, you know, this well, feeling I, of not knowing what direction to go in. Yeah. I think she did. And I also think we're doing a little bit of that. I'm just not sure we're doing it exactly how she wanted it. But I think we are talking about certain values and certain idea, certain core ideas. And I think we're not that far apart. And I, and, and, and uh, uh, do we, do we want to have uh, 15 minutes for public comment? We I, should. I, I, we I should. would like, I would like to. So we'll, we'll include that. Um, and Noah, right? so far, is anybody taking that time? If we grab it first, because it'll be up to oh, now. Oh, um, yeah, you you got it. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, um, all right, so we said 4.30, right? Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so I just did, so I, I'm, um, I'm almost certain I could be there at that time, but I said I might be just a minute or two late, depending on if it's a class that's ending right before, so, but I think I should be able to do it. I think, yeah, so let's, let's, let's go with that time. I think it's best to do that. So then we end around six, is that the plan? Yeah, we'll meet 4.30 to six. That way, if people need to get bite to eat it, you can, yeah. between six and 6.45, you can grab something, Cynthia. Thank you, thank you. Um, anything else on the agenda, public comment, review the list. Is there anything we want to be saying to the commission at this point? Um, because there's this interplay between the, the, the department that we're tossing around. I, 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 it's just an open question. Does that, is there anything that we need to say before we end about how we want to be interfacing with the commission? Because I think we're in agreement that we all want to be commenting and, and, and saying something about all these various areas we've been talking about. So all, all I'll add is sort of something I've said a few times is I, I think that the, this commission will be at its best if it can reflect the, the voices, all the voices sort of in the commission. I, and I understand the challenge is how to do that in a way that's coherent in, in the end. But I'm struck with the fact that our subcommittee um, does have a voice that is uh, unique and has been often challenged about whether it's uh, relevant or appropriate. But I, I do think that um, I would like to see the discussions we've been having reflected in the final document in some form. Proportionally, again, I, I, I'm never. I don't want an outsized role. I don't want to, you know, say more, have a louder voice than other people have. But I do think the things we're doing are important and should be in the document uh, somewhere. 
Um, it, if I could just respond to that quickly, Namdi, I think this, I, I agree with you completely. And I think a point of consensus is this idea of safety. There are some people who have testified they feel safe with this police department. And there's other people who have testified that they don't feel safe. And that our, you know, our consensus point is we want a safe community, right? For everybody. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and so I think bringing all the voices in is, is essential um, in this final report. That's how I feel anyway. And, I um, also, thank you. I also want to add, and David, have this on your list, Namdi's point about catastrophic, catastrophic events, just to, that that is a piece. There's no policy on catastrophic, catastrophic events. I don't know how they do that actually. There must be somewhere, but, um, but that's, that's what, what um, that's another piece that I, I appreciate um, that's been added to this. Okay, so maybe we have a little bit more focus, we'll see. Um, David's gonna work on the list um, and uh, we'll all see each other tomorrow night and uh, I'm going to uh, uh, ask uh, somebody move that we uh, end the meeting. Motion to end the meeting. And the second. Second. Have a very nice day. Good job, Dick. Yeah. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Yeah.